Hello, good evening, and welcome to the CPD Meet webinar on this Thursday. I was going to say Tuesday then, on this Thursday evening. My name is Andrew Omrod, and I have a dual role this evening because I am the facilitator of the webinar, but I am also the presenter of the webinar, uh, which makes a change because I normally hand over to somebody else to do the, uh, the presentation. The ability to keep your CPD portfolio up to date. Um, <laughs> If you was anything like me, uh, I've kept an accurate record of everything I've done, but it's never been virtually organized. In fact, it looked something like this. And that isn't your problem, because this is historically how we would record our CPD. We would keep it in a folder, would keep it in some kind of manner, in a box or a storage unit or a pigeonhole. And when we needed it, for example, an interview or an audit, we'd pull it out and put it into some kind of manner or fashion. Now, when I did my research, I recognised that to organise something like what you can see on screen into a format that would be acceptable for interview or for audit would on average take around 38 hours. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I certainly don't have 38 hours to sit in front of a computer and format my portfolio into something which people would enjoy reading with some organised manner to it. And so thus the reason that we created CPDME back in 2009. If your portfolio does look something like this still, then it's not your fault. Um, the concept of keeping a portfolio like this is very ritualised and it's what we've learned from our peers and colleagues historically. And so you're not alone. When I recently did a survey of 5,000 random professionals across the health and social care sector, it revealed that less than 3% were actually organised in relation to keeping a portfolio. So that's about 150 people out of the 5,000 people that we surveyed. Uh, the key to being organised is literally getting started. Um, and the reason we created CPDME was because it makes it so easy to manage and maintain your portfolio when you use our structured system. So using the system will, number one, reduce the time you spend thinking about documenting CPD. And historically, again, it would be interviews um, or audits, whether it's the HCPC or whether it's the Nursing Warfare Council. And so we need to start thinking outside the box of why we need to keep an accurate record of CPD. And one of the main reasons is, is because it's your defence. It is your accurate record of your learning and development. And in all likelihood, from my experience, the probability is it will be your employer that asks for your CPD portfolio before, indeed, the HCPC or uh, any other government body. And so it is really important that you do keep a record of CPD for you primarily and then for the other bodies and the other government agencies as a secondary thought. Using CPDME does help you keep your portfolio organised and it also helps you keep all your evidence organised in safe one place. Um, and so that if you need to access it to put a portfolio together, or indeed you have a piece of evidence in your portfolio, like a document or a journal that you want to share with somebody else, it's really easy to, um, to do that. Um, when it comes to registration or re-registration or revalidation, it literally takes roughly about four minutes to build your portfolio. So when we compare that to the 38, 39 hours it will take to organise this, when you use this system, it takes three to four minutes. And so you can see straight away one of the biggest barriers around keeping and recording CPD is broken down by, by simply that one single statistic. We use CPDME as an ongoing research project. And what we do anonymously is every month we'll capture a thousand random people. And we look at them, thousand people across a, a platform of mobile devices and also using the website. And we look on average of how long it takes them to document an effective piece of learning and development, whether that's attending a course, whether it's reading a certificate. And so we know on average how long it roughly takes people to use a website. And as you can see on screen, it takes an average of three minutes to keep your CPD portfolio up to date each month. And the reason it only takes three minutes is because we've broke down one of the main barriers, which was how do I structure my learning and development to keep an accurate record of my CPD? And we've done that by using the mobile app and by using a very simple form that you can complete using the website. One of the other things people aren't ever sure about is what can I put within my CPD portfolio? What type of activities and what type of evidence? Because historically, we would collect nothing but certificates, certificates, certificates. And of course, the HCPC require understanding too. Your CPD is a mixture of learning and development activities. So it's important that you do have a mixture of learning and development activities in order to meet that one requirement. So when we talk about evidence, um, historically, we think about certificates, we perhaps think about thank you letters. 
but there is lots and lots and lots of other things that can be included within your portfolio. For example, uh, action plans, a questionnaire that you've completed at work. You could even put in there a peer review document. So, for example, if you've had a PAD document or a KSF review, you can use that to form part of your CPD portfolio. Uh, you can also use things like PowerPoints. If you've certainly been to university or you've had some higher education, what I'd strongly suggest is that you use all your essays because your essay, as well as the reading material that you use to construct your essay, makes absolutely fantastic fantastic supporting documentation for your portfolio. So upload all that, and then you can perhaps even copy some paragraphs from the essay, which will explain what you learned, and also how that's gonna be applicable to your specific practice. When we talk about different types of activities, and I'll, and I'll tell you a little bit about this later on as we go through the guide videos, uh, with these things like reflective practice, which we have a, a unique section within the system, and we've also got things like job rotations or secondments. And so if you've been acting up in some capacity, you can document that within the system and, and demonstrate how acting up improved your skills, any new knowledge or anything that you learned within that particular role you've done at the time. If you have done a case study at university or you've done a case study at work because you've recognised that this is not the best way to do something, perhaps we should look at evidence-based practice and move on. And then you can also use that to substantiate your portfolio to vary your activities. Ideally, if you're a mentor, that is the most perfect opportunity because you can document in there how in your capacity as a mentor, you've helped somebody else develop, but also how them skills of mentoring has helped you develop. And so mentoring is a really good way to document your different activities. And also being a witness, because sometimes in a, in a capacity as a health and social care professional, we're called as a professional witness or we have an experience where we might have to give a police statement for a particular incident. And you can reflect upon that and use that also as a, as a varying amount of evidence within your portfolio. As technology gets smarter, so do we, uh, because we're not just an IT company, we are a team of health and social care professionals behind CBDME. And so as things change within practice, things also change within the website. And we can normally make changes pretty quickly because we have a really responsive IT team behind us. So, for example, on screen, you can see uh, a demonstration with Apple Watch. And one of the great things about the Apple Watch is you can dictate into the app and the app will turn it into text and in turn will drop that automatically into your portfolio. The other good thing is you can forward plan your CPD. So you can forward date something. So perhaps if you have a, a conference or an event planned for later in the year, you can forward date the very basics of that conference or event. And the day after that event, the system will remind you to take a few minutes out to document what you've learned and also how that's going to potentially change or influence your practice. So that's a really smart addition because it almost integrates a calendar system into the CPD system, which in turn complements each other very well. When it comes to producing your portfolio, um, the system does one of two things. It will produce you a digital PDF. And the advantage of this digital PDF is that most governing bodies or accepting bodies will now accept it by email. So you don't physically have to send your portfolio off to these bodies anymore. You can send it digitally by email. And the advantage, as you can probably see on screen, is you have a list of professional development supporting evidence. So everything that you've uploaded to our system securely using the website or the mobile app will appear in a blue hyperlink as you can see on the screen on the right hand side. So when the governing body or your employer or your interviewer or your assessor wants to have a look at something you've substantiated your portfolio with, like a certificate or a PowerPoint or an essay, they simply just need to click on the blue link that will let them have a preview of that supporting evidence and so you no longer risk losing original certificates or documents by sending them in the post. Because it's a PDF document, of course, you can also print that off. And so if you want to keep a traditional portfolio so that you keep it nice and organized, you can print that off. And what I tend to do with mine is if I'm going for an interview or an, an audit or a promotion, I'll tend to print off my diary entry and I'll put that onto the left-hand side of my portfolio. And whatever I've used to substantiate that particular diary entry with, I'll put on the right-hand side. So if you imagine opening this, this PDF document up, you'll see the diary entries on the left hand side and the supporting evidence on the right hand side right throughout the entire portfolio. And what that does, of course, it almost makes the evidence speak because you can see the evidence on the right, but on the left hand side, you are describing why you took part in that learning activity, but more important, how it's going to change the way that you manage your patients or your service users. When it comes to managing the portfolio within CPDME, we have a really simple platform. And the simple platform is designed to be used intuitively by any age group. So whether you are a brand new graduate, an 18 year old coming from university, or indeed you're a, a, a 65 year old veteran on the verge of retirement, and you haven't had any academic study, this system is designed to work for you because we've made it absolutely foolproof. 
And so as you can see on the screen, I've got my diary entries at the top left. I've got my reflective entries following that. I've got the ability to print off my CV, which is a feature which is coming shortly, and the ability to print off my portfolio. So I've got four simple modules on there. And below that, I've got an analytical graph of everything I've done over the last 12 months, which makes it really, really easy for you to quickly log on and you can see what you've done over the 12 month period. When we talked about activities and varying your activities, we've got an extensive video library on the system. And that video library has around 40 guide videos on there, which talks about how you would document attending a conference, how you would document learning from experience, how you document a case study, and also lots of different um, types of evidence on there. So, for example, if you have got an Excel spreadsheet from some clinical indicators or performance indicators, how you would turn that into an effective piece of CPD. The other great advantage, as I said, because we are a team of health and social care professionals behind CPDME, is if you ever get stuck, you simply just need to ask us and somebody will be available pretty much around the clock to answer the question quickly. When I say quickly, normally within about four hours, uh, you'll get an answer to your questions. We've also got an extensive video guide library on there. And so if you're not too sure, you can literally tick on the little help box at the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the website, ask your question. And if it's already been asked before, there probably will be an answer within the knowledge base. But if there isn't, you have the option to interact with somebody by asking the question. Occasionally, if somebody's in the office, they'll pop up the chat mode. And so when you click on the help button, you also have the opportunity to do some live chat with individuals. So first of all, we're going to go through the diary section and the diary section is predominantly where you will document anything that you've taken part in. So, for example, if you attend a course or you take part in mentoring or some shadowing or supervising, this is where you would document that in the CPD diary entry. And so it's almost like you're putting an entry in your diary to see you've taken part in a learning activity. And this is where you would put the evidence to. So as I scroll through this form, you'll see that it's got my name my email address and then it asks me for my governing body and the reason why there's several uh, several options on here for governing bodies is because some people are registered with the healthcare professions council but some people are also registered with the nursing midwifery council so as you select the different options here you'll notice that the boxes underneath will change dynamically and so if i tick the hcpc box you'll notice that the hcpc standards have appeared if i tick that I'm registered with the Nursing and Warfare Council, and then the HCPC standards disappear and the Nursing and Warfare Council revalidation standards appear. If you're not registered with the governing body, then you can select either of these next two options. If you select, I am uh, not registered with a professional body, but you are a registered professional with somebody else. If you select that option, it gives you a very generic way to keep an accurate record of your CPD. And for anybody on here who's not registered with either of these two bodies, I'd strongly suggest that you probably use that um, use that category. The next box is this uh, activity or this activity was arranged by and this is a drop down box and this has got several options there so for example your study time as a student at the university, your study time at college, your capacity as an off-duty health professional or your role as a mentor so there's lots and lots of different uh, opportunities in there so I'm going to put on there myself in my own time for this webinar this evening. The next box down is the category this activity relates to. And again, there's a massive drop down list on there. And when we talked about some of the activities, there's around 40 different activities you can choose. And so I'm going to put on this for tonight. So I'm going to put it as down as a narrated PowerPoint. The next section is the title. And within this section, you need to put nothing other than the title of the learning activity. So for example, I'm going to just put in there um, live webinar with over. 220 people demonstrating building a CPD portfolio using CPD me. So that literally needs to be nothing more than the title of the particular activity or event that you're taking part in. The next box down is the start date of event. And literally, if this is a singular date, you literally just need to put the 21st of the 1st in, which is today's date. If this is a two-day or a three-day mandatory training course, or indeed a three or four-day advanced life support course, you can click the second box, and then it gives you an end date of the activity. And that will just demonstrate to the user that this particular learning event has taken place over a period of time, as opposed to just a single 24-hour period. 
This next box allows you to document the number of hours relating to this particular activity. And so what I always tell people at this stage is just be very careful about exaggerating your hours. And so, for example, if you have taken part in a half day course, then simply just document the two or three hours for that half day period. Don't try and round it off the nearest five or six hours because you could be challenged and your, your professional integrity questioned. The next box is this development activity has benefited you because... And what happens when you click onto this box is a guide drop down underneath. And so all you need to do within this section is simply document why you took part in this particular learning activity, how this might have affected you as an individual, how this might affect the way that you do your job or your further study if you're a university student or at college, how it might affect your patients or colleague, and how also you can follow on from this learning activity. So just follow them simple guides. And from that information below, you'll find you'll extract just about everything you need to create a really good reflective diary entry. And so I'm just gonna put in there, took part in a live webinar. See how easy it is to use CPD me. Okay, the next box down is the um, HCPC standards. Because I'm registered with the HCPC, I can select the standards that are relevant to this particular diary entry. And what I say to people at this stage is don't just tick the boxes because it's really easy to tick these boxes. It's really important that you, if you are registered with the Healthcare Professions Council or indeed the Nursing Warfare Council or another government body, then it's really important that you understand the standards. Don't just tick these because the system has made it easy for you to do that. And so for this instance, I'm just going to take the standard one, which is maintain a continuous, up-to-date, accurate record of my CPD activities. But please do just take a moment to go to the HCPC website or indeed to the Nursing Movement Referral website and make sure you are completely fluid with these particular standards. The next box, if you are registered in the um, NHS, allows you to document these to the KSF. And so you can tick that box and you can map them to the Knowledge and Skills Framework. The next box allows you to document a website. And so if this is a online learning experience, you can document in there a website address. And so I've just put in there cpdme.com, but you may well want to copy a website address from the top uh, Internet Explorer and paste it in there. And that is fine. And the advantage to that is you can revisit it at a later stage and use it as part of your ongoing learning. This next box is quite a unique box. And when I say unique, it's very specific to CPDME. And that allows the system to send you a reminder if your certificate or evidence will expire. And so a good example of that is if this is a advanced life support certificate that has a shelf life of one year or two years, if I click yes to the reminder system, the system will automatically send you either a text message or an email in around 10, 11 months time as a prompt reminder to ensure that you have a look at this piece of evidence and if it does need updating or revalidating you can take some time to arrange that and that stops you having a portfolio full of old certificates or old evidence that is no use to anybody anymore this next section where you can upload evidence allows you to attach things like powerpoints or essays or scan documents and you can attach up to 10 pieces of supporting evidence to each particular diary entry and if you don't have access to them at the time you can simply submit the diary entry and you can go back in at a later stage and edit what you've done. So once you click submit, like I have just have done, you will get this green banner. And this green banner says that my diary entry has now been stored securely on the system. And I'll very shortly receive an email back to confirm that the system has received that and securely stored it. At this point is a good point to point out to people. But some people say, is the system secure? We use exactly the same security system as most high street banks. And also that we have the um, most up-to-date security system, which you can click on the top left-hand corner. You can see the little padlock just at the front of the word cpdme.com. And that demonstrates to you that our system is built on a secure platform. It's at this stage where I will normally click into my personal profile and I will show you that particular diary entry that I've just made. So if I click into my personal profile and I click on to edit and print portfolio, you will see that this terminal pops up the same terminal that I demonstrated on the presentation. So within the diary entries, up at the top here, if I click on there, at the very top of that, you will see this particular diary entry, which is live webinar with over 220 people demonstrating building a CPD portfolio using CPDB. 
Now I've got several options from here. I can either preview that, and if I click on preview, that will show me what that looks like in a live PDF. So I can print that off if I want to at this point. The next option I have is to edit, and if I click on to edit, that will pop up in the same window, so that gives me a chance to add more information to that. It also gives me a chance to add more evidence if I want to. Click on to submit, and that will update the system. I click on to delete, you will get a little pop-up, and that pop-up will say, do you definitely want to delete this piece of entry? Because if you do click on to confirm, it will completely delete that particular piece of entry from your portfolio, and there is no way at all that anybody can recover it. It will delete it altogether from the system. So I'll just click cancel for the time being on there. The other option is you can download the mobile apps, and I'm just about to flick onto the screen my app. So you should hopefully now be able to see on your screen my iPhone. And so what I've done is I've downloaded the CPDB app, which I'm going to load up there. And what's important is if you use the app along with the website, is you use the same email address because it forms part of the security system. What I can see from the app is the last time I updated my portfolio using this app, it was the 20th of January 2016, which of course was yesterday. So again, exactly the same as the system we have. We've got the ability to submit a diary entry, and we've also got the ability to submit reflections. So I'm just going to demonstrate the ability to dictate learning and development into the app. And the advantage of dictating into the app is you can document your learning and development entry immediately after you've taken part in it. So this might be you've read a chapter in a book. It might be that you've taken part in a conference or event. And what's really important, or one of the best tips I can possibly give you guys and girls who's joined me tonight is if you use the mobile app it literally takes seconds to make a diary entry and so I'm going to click into the diary entry and I'm going to click onto activity arranged and as you can see on screen all the categories are there so this is going to be myself as part of my job role whilst in work time the next option is going to be a brief description of evidence so I'm going to put in there that I've um, read a book on medical educating the start date would be the date that I read this particular book or read a particular chapter of the book and again you can see that I can select today's date which I will do or I can select an end date and so again if it's took me two or three days to read the book I can put an end date in there but for this chapter I'm just going to simply put one in there the next button will take you onto the HCPC standards and within the HCPC standards, again, make sure that you don't just tick these boxes because it's really easy to tick them. The app has made it so it's really quick and accessible to make an accurate record of your CPD, but I please ask you to take a moment to have a look at the standards. Throughout the app, if you're not sure um, what to do next, if you click onto the question mark, a little guide will pop over to the right-hand side and will give you a good indication of what you need to be putting into these boxes. And so I've recently read a book provided by one of friends of mine who does presentations for us called Dr. Mike Davis, and that was a pocket guide for teaching for clinical instructors. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how quick I can make a particular diary entry based on dictating into the app. So I'm going to click onto this little box, the little white box, and you can see that my keyboard has appeared underneath. What I'm going to do now, hopefully, if I can avoid coughing, is click onto the little dictation icon at the bottom. So you can see at the bottom of my screen, I've got a little dictation icon. I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to hopefully uh, dictate into the app, and it's going to accurately convert my talk into text. Recently read a pocket guide to teaching for clinical instructors. Full stop. Reading chapters within this book will help me produce lectures and also demonstrate my teaching skills when I next demonstrate learning and development and recording CPD within a university setting. Full stop. Hopefully, once I have taken on board these new techniques and information from within this book, this will change the way that I give my students a better understanding of the way to accurately record CPD using the structured method that I have created on cpdme.com. So, as you can see there, apart from the little gap between the cpdme.com, it's pretty accurate at, at dictating what you have done. And if I was in a conference and I just quickly wanted to make a note or I quickly wanted to document what I'd learnt, I can very quickly dictate into the app and make an accurate record of what I've done. And it doesn't have to be lengthy. It literally might just have to be a description because you can always go back in and you can edit this at any given point in time.
The next bit is the category that this activity relates to. And again, as you can see, there's lots and lots of scrolled categories there. So this one's going to be um, reading or reviewing. This next section allows you to capture evidence. And so if I click on the capture evidence um, plus, so there's a little plus button there, it says evidence none. Click onto that and I can use my camera. And so you should be able to see my desktop now and you can probably see that I've got the book in front of me or I could capture something that has been of interest, or indeed I could probably just capture the front of the book if I wanted to, just to demonstrate that I have indeed um, read this particular book. I can then use that photo as supporting evidence, and you can see now within the app, it says that I've got some evidence attached. And again, if there's a website relating to this, I can give that um, website address in there. So again, I'll just put in there .cpdme.com. Click on to submit. That normally takes a few seconds if you attach some evidence, but you can very quickly see that that's clicked onto um, submitted and that will have gone through to my CPD portfolio online. So if I minimize that box now and I go back to my edit and print portfolio, you'll see at the very top of my diary entries will hopefully be that read a book on medical educating. So if I want to see a preview of the print ready copy, I can click onto preview and I can see that that is already formatted it for me into a print ready copy. If I want to see the attached evidence, I can click onto the evidence icon and that will allow me to pop up a copy of the evidence that supported it. If I want to delete that specific piece of evidence and upload a chapter from the book, I can click onto this little icon at the side, click onto delete, and that again will ask me if I definitely want to delete that evidence, and I can click onto confirm. Or I can indeed click onto edit, and I can continue to type or change or amend this document uh, depending on what else I want to add to it at that given point in time. Once I've made any amendments, if I click onto submit, that will automatically update within the uh, portfolio system. Going back to the system, the next element of building a portfolio is reflective practice. And reflective practice is something that we do all the time. However, we sometimes don't take time to document it. Basically, again, because it sometimes takes time and there's structures around reflection. Without going through the form, I will quickly demonstrate to you that if you are unsure what reflective practice is, there's a guide video here. Click onto reflective video and Stephanie, um, our colleague, will demonstrate to you within around 60 seconds exactly what reflective practice is and how that will take its um, role within a clinical or practice setting. And she's really good at breaking it down into really simple to understand language. But as you walk through the form, as you can see, as you click through these boxes, a guide will fold down underneath. And so whether you use Gibbs's model, which is an academic model, whether you use John's model, or indeed whether you use Crashed. So if anybody here is belongs to pre-hospital, so whether you're a practice nurse um, or a, a, a GP, or whether you're a paramedic or a technician, the Crash model is very specific to working in a pre-hospital setting because this talks about communication on, on receiving the patient or getting the job via a control room system, your response, perhaps even if you drove or whether you was a midwife on call, whether you came across any problems on your way to the job, your actions, your subsequent actions, uh, what happened when the patient was transferred to hospital, and then it talks about um, evaluation and ethics, what could you have done better, what could you have learnt from this particular incident, and then you can put in the back end your discussion to what you spoke about with your peers on reflection. And we all take part in the reflective practice all the time, we just sometimes don't document it. But again, if you use a mobile app, it is really easy to dictate very short sections into each one of those and that will help you fill out a good piece of reflective practice. Uh, one good tip I can give you is that um, you should at least have two pieces of reflective practice per year if you're working full time in a health and social care role. Uh, and that's accepted to be good practice within a practice uh, practice setting. Within the personal profile, there's lots of other options on there. For example, there's um, very shortly going to be the ability to print off your CPD activity graph and that will print off an infograph of your CPD activity. The new feature coming shortly is the shared CPD blog. So when you share your evidence, so when you upload your evidence to your portfolio, it also is going to give you the option to share it on a blog. And the advantage of sharing it on the blog is, of course, you can access other people's um, evidence, whether that's something they've read or a PowerPoint or a video link to a website or a journal. And you can use that, to, again, to support your CPD, uh, making sure, of course, you have permission to share whatever you're using to substantiate your portfolio. The edit and print portfolio is the terminal that pops up that shows you how to uh, edit your reflective practice or your diary entries. Your front page creator, you can create a matching front page or you can have a play about and see what your front page of your portfolio would look like. 
and the guide videos are also all contained within your personal profile so again if you click on to guide videos you can see there when this loads up that you've lots of different um, examples of activities and you've also got lots of different examples of evidence that you can substantiate your portfolio with so at this point i normally demonstrate to people how fast i can build my portfolio and i remember if, if you in the presentation when i said to you it takes an average of 38 39 hours to build a portfolio generally when you have something and unorganized I'll show you how quickly I can build my portfolio using CPD me so again back onto my terminal and I'm going to click on to print my portfolio so what this is now going to ask me is the title or the front page of my portfolio and so for this example I'm just going to put on there sample CPD portfolio notice the character count at the end which now says I've got eight characters remaining because if I continue to type within this section the character count will fall off the edge and it will highlight the box as red, which means it will literally fall off the end of the page and not look nice and neat and tidy, which would hopefully expect your, your portfolio to appear. And then underneath there, I'm going to put um, development. Okay, so I can see there that I've kept within my character count and I'm going to click on to continue. And that is nothing more than the front page of my CPD portfolio. All the other information like your name or your NMC and your HCPC registered number, it will automatically pull from your profile. So don't worry about that at this particular point. This next option allows you to select everything you've ever done. So everything you've ever uploaded to CPDME or it allows you to select just a date range. So for purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to just select um, a date range. So I'm going to select from uh, the 6th of January through to the 21st of January. So if this was an audit or an interview, you might only want to collect the last two years of, Z of CPD, as opposed to everything you've uploaded over a, a four, five, six year period of time. Click on to continue, and then that will literally just select options that you've uh, uploaded within that period of time. And so there's a couple of test entries there, which I don't want to include. However, there's a couple of good entries there that I do want to include. So a lecture, a discussion, a chat, uh, an introduction to some theory, a CPD webinar from a previous event that I attended, a live webinar from tonight, and also reading the book, which are the entries that we've made this evening. Here is a list of the different categories. And so if you want to make sure that your CPD is a mixture of learning activities, this category will tell you what particular um, activity that event was documented as so you can see there that was reading or reviewing the book that was a narrated powerpoint so i can see there's a good mixture of learning activities within that description category this next one shows you a date so it shows you the dates that the particular activities were related to the next box allows you to attach the evidence and remember on the presentation when i said it creates a digital list of all your supporting evidence if you select all here and tick the boxes that are relevant to your entries that will provide a digital list of your supporting evidence so you can email your portfolio as opposed to print it off for the grey boxes that don't have anything or don't have the ability to tick that simply means that you haven't uploaded anything to support that piece of evidence if you click on to preview at the side you'll notice a little preview will pop up and within there you will see a print ready copy of what that particular entry looks like so at this point you can decide to either keep it in or you can take it out simply by ticking this first box so if you don't want to include that you literally just untick it and it'll take it out of the portfolio click on to next once you've done that and then it will look for reflective entries between that period of time so if you have any reflective entries between them two dates you've selected in january these will now appear and again you can tick them to include them or you can untick them to exclude them click on to next and now it's ready to either download your pdf portfolio or you can go back to your platform reports if you think you need to change something or you've made a mistake click on to download you can see a quick blue progress bar at the top of the screen and depending on how big your portfolio is depending on how fast that produce but you can see very quickly that my pdf has appeared and i can see now when i click on it from the bottom of the screen that that has appeared it's populated my name it's populated my title and who i'm registered with okay we've had a couple of people ask about the clinical skills log and um the clinical skills log has been an absolute success in fact we have um, lots and lots and lots of people download it and so what we've decided is at some stage in march or april we will be integrating the clinical skills log into cpdme so just like the process of building a portfolio i've shown you tonight you'll be able to go into that uh, portfolio builder and integrate your clinical skills log within your portfolio system 
you'll also, on the next updates, be able to go in, edit and amend any changes that um, you have made within the clinical skills setting. And so that app is completely free of charge. Uh, I'd suggest you, you go to the app store now, apart from Android, which has been released in February. In fact, I've just had a quick preview of the Android one tonight and it's looking pretty good. Uh, so we are due to launch that guaranteed in February. But the iPhone app is available this evening for you to, to bob and download. And so thank you very much. You'll probably just notice on my screen that the report manager has logged me out because if there is no activity or it doesn't sense any activity for seven minutes, the system will automatically log you out and such. Uh, we'll save whatever you were doing at the time and we'll, uh, we'll take you back to uh, back to the system. All that's left for me to say, ladies and gentlemen, is thank you very much. And if you do have any more questions after the webinar, you can always drop me an email or just simply visit the help button at the bottom right hand side of the website, click on to help, find my email within there, drop me a question, and I'll be in the office for the next hour to answer your questions as quick as I can. So thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Again, you'll get your certificate of attendance and you'll get a digital copy sent to your email within 24 hours. Or if you're a member of CPDME, that will automatically drop into your profile without you having to worry about it. 